So we'll talk about that complex scenario. See, see, in every interview, the first question what the people ask is, what is the complex scenario that you've implemented? So, okay. Uh, what you have to explain about that is you need to actually understand. See, uh, definitely if it is a complex scenario, means if I'm trying to even explain you, you may not be able to get it the first time, but I'll give you one second. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So okay. just try to understand it and then go through the video later point of time and then see that. Okay. okay. So the scenario goes mm -hmm. like this. Let's say I have, uh, you know, um, there were some 21 tables in our source system, which are okay. uh, 21 tables, which are having the same structure. So, you know, the structure of the tables is actually same and the number of columns, data type of the columns, everything is the same, but the different table name, it's not the same table name. So it okay. will be something like this. Let's say uh, you have SAN is one site. See, uh, you can say that. He, see, our customer business is actually spread across the multiple sites and based on the each site, the data is present something like this. So you can call it as SAN work order underscore data. That is one. Let's say PIL work order underscore data, something like this. So first, prefix will change, but entire table name is same. So it is just nothing but a site ID. So likewise, I have 21 tables which are having the same structure and which contains, uh, I mean, which contains the similar set of columns and the data type, okay? Now, the requirement is that okay. we had to bring all these data from 21 tables, okay? And from this 21 tables, I have to load the data into some staging area. So basically, staging okay. table, okay? It's a staging table, so you can call it as STG underscore work order data. And from staging table, whatever the incremental data that I get, I have to load into the work order fact table, which is having some kind of metrics and all. Okay. See, I have these 21 tables, which is there in the different database. Okay. It's all together. Um, so the scenario is like this. Uh, this is my transactional system, or you can call it a source system. And there are uh, 21 schemas which are present here, or yeah. Uh, not uh, yeah, 21 uh, schemas or 21 sources which we have and all the sources are present in this database. It's a common database which they have. So let's say I'm talking about these two. So likewise, they have um, 21 sources which do you do have. Let's say XYZ underscore work order data, something like this. So you have like this, you have a 21 tables. And this is actually present in some remote database. It is not, I mean, this database is present in all together in a separate database. So this is like your OLTP system, which you can call. Okay. Now our requirement is that we have to bring the incremental data from this and put it into our staging database. Let's say your staging database is something called as a EDW underscore stage. Okay. So this is my staging table. And I do have a staging table here, which is the name is STG underscore work order underscore data. See, the client is actually wanted to pull up the incremental data, but not using mapping variables. We are actually doing the uh, incremental data by using the mapping parameters. Okay. So mm -hmm. mapping parameters, we have to pull up the incremental data. So in this table, there is a date called as a order date or a created date, which you can call. Okay, Order date is a column, which we are using it to extract the incremental data. That is your uh, CDC change data capture. And from this incremental data, we need to load the data into your fact table. So your fact table is there in the other schema. So that is your in your EDW schema, I mean EDW table or whatever. So this is uh the schema i mean um, this is a schema edw where you have it as a um you have it in the this one so my fact table what i'm actually loading is a work order daily fact i mean day level orders have been stored so that's why we are calling this as a work order daily fact so this is what is a complex mapping so now what you have to do is you need to develop a common mapping see 
from all these 21 tables, I have to load the data into this. I cannot use a union because uh, each table is having some around 10 million records. I mean, on a daily basis, each table is having around some, let's say 0.1 million records. And if I combine the 21 sites, it's basically it will become 3 million records. So if you are combining 3 million records using a union all, it becomes a difficult query for me. So you can say that each table contain around 15 columns. I mean, 50 columns are present in this table, 50, 5, 0 columns. Okay. Now I cannot use a union since it is a huge set of a data. We cannot use a union. Okay. Now, in order to implement this, you can actually explain in such a way saying that we have developed a common mapping, common mapping. Okay. So, uh, which will have a, a source column. I mean, which will have a source with a 50 columns and which will read the incremental data and then load it into your uh, stage underscore work order data. And for uh, a mapping name is going to be M underscore work order, I mean stage underscore work order data. Okay. And uh, mm -hmm. the session name is going to be S underscore M underscore STG work order underscore data. Okay. So this is what is your session. See, we have used a common source. Source name, we have given it as something like this. Let's say xxx underscore work order data this is what we have given see why we have it's just a common source definition i'm giving with all the 50 columns see since because the source structure is same and the number of columns is same uh, in this mapping we have parameterized the mapping name okay we have parameterized the sorry not mapping name we have parameterized the table name from which it has to read the data source table name is parameterized mm -hmm. okay so we have a uh, source table name we have defined a parameter okay now in your source qualifier query what you write is it is something like this select all the 50 column names from whatever the column one column two column three right so c1 comma c2 comma c3 likewise go on and then the c50 from you're going to use it as dollar dollar source table name dollar dollar source table name this is actually a table name which I'm going to pass it as a parameter okay and you're going to also need to extract the incremental data based on the uh, mapping parameters right so we are going to write a query order date is a column so between order date is between let's say the dollar dollar start date and dollar dollar end date so dollar dollar start date and end date are also parameters so in your mapping total, how many parameters you have? You have total three parameters, which are there in your mapping now. So I need to pass three parameters. So for, for this mapping, so this is just a mapping for a one source, right? Because one source column is common. Yeah. So, so yeah. likewise for one mapping, we have created 21 sessions. See from all these 21 sessions, I can actually invoke the same mapping, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so one from 21 session, I can invoke the same mapping. So all your all everything is changing is your source table name is changing. Maybe the start date and end date values are changing. Everything else is a common, right? So your column names is common yeah. and your uh, order date column is common between all the columns. So we have created a 21 sessions and kept it into a worklet. We have created a 21 yeah. session and then kept it into a worklet. And all these 21 sessions are invoking the same mapping, right? You have developed only one mapping. Your target is same. For all the 21 sources, your target is same. It is not the different target. So you don't need to develop 21 mappings for this. One mapping and 21 sessions, you can actually create it, right? So far, you're good? Yeah, that's good. Yeah. yeah. So now, what we have to do is, basically, if I have to pass this dollar dollar start date and end date values basically i need to generate the parameter file dynamically so for generating the parameter file dynamically we have created another session which will read the incremental dates you know which will read the incremental dates from a etl job control table so you know how to uh, not etl job control i think it's a job control so from the job control table, it will read the incremental dates from the job control and writes okay. the data to a parameter file. Writes the data to a parameter.
parameter file. So this parameter file is basically will be generated for all your 21 sessions. So it's like S1, uh, you'll have a parameter file something like this. You'll have a S1 and what is a source one name? So dollar dollar source table name. I think it's a source tab name. So source tab name is equal to, let's say, what is my source name, which I have given you the first. Uh, this is for a first one, let's say SAN underscore work order data. All right. So and uh, dollar dollar start date and end date values. So based on the each for each site, you have a different incremental dates which you have to pull. Let's say I mean same incremental date also you can tell. So maybe for a start date also I'll fetch one value and for end date also I'll fetch one value. So this session, whatever we are creating, that's an incremental session which you can call it as S underscore M generate parameter file. So this is a session which will generate the parameter values for all your 21 sessions, whatever you, you have seen. So it's like S21, S1, S2, S3. Likewise, you have a S21 sessions. And for these 21 sessions, you'll generate the incremental dates as well as a source table name, right? So it will contain the values, something like this. See, I'm representing only the first one and last one. Between also, you'll have the similar kind of a things, okay? So yeah. now here, let's say something like PAI or whatever, site name, you can keep it as. And this parameter file is another session wherein you're actually using a normalizer to generate the parameter file. You can say that to generate the parameter file, we are using a normalizer to convert the uh, columns to rows, right? So for converting the columns to rows, we have created a normalizer. Now we have created one mapping, 20, 22 sessions totally, right? 21 sessions for uh, reading the data to staging table. And another one is to generate the parameter. Yeah. Another session which we have created is to load the data into work order table. So work order, daily fact or whatever. So this, what this session does is it's a pretty simple. It will read the data from STG work order data and load it into work order daily fact, uh, work order daily fact based on the insert and update logic. So based on the work order, if the work order is existing, we'll update it. If the work order is not existing, we'll insert it. So it's based on the insert update logic. So you can say that uh, for loading the data into this fact table, we have used uh, n number of validations. You can say that we have used uh, more than 50 validations we have used for validating the each and every data and then the uh, postal code validation, customer information validation, address validation, all these things we have included, almost 50 validations, which we have implemented all around 10 maplets. You can say that, 10 maplets, okay? So for this mapping, what I'm telling you is, so we have created a work order daily fact mapping, which is based on the insert update logic. And for validating all the validations based on this, we have created around 15 validations with 10 mappings. You can just say that. And we have also used around some 10 lookups, which we have created to, to fetch the data into the work order daily fact table. Okay. So what kind of validations that you have implemented? So you can say that uh, zip code validation, I mean, that's a postal code, uh, postal code validation and we have uh, validated the address, we have validated the customer email, customer phone number, all these things you can just say that, okay, around 50 validations we have done. And this mapping, if they ask you like how many transformations that you have used, you can say that we have close to some 100 transformations, including expressions, lookups, maplets, look up, everything. Uh, and the router and everything, we have used close to some 50 to 100 transformations, whatever you say, okay? Um, and so you can just say that. And now for implementing the complete mapping, so this is how it is looks like. See, first we will generate the parameter file based on the uh, incremental dates in the job control table, right? So we have one session, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, this is nothing but S underscore M generate uh, parameter file session. And once the parameter file is generated, you need to actually use a worklet. This worklet will contain a 21 sessions. 
uh, all of them you can say that we are running in a parallel because there is no dependency so we are running all of them in the parallel so you can call it as this is called as a worklet worklet underscore stage load so this is another one and after loading the data into the staging table then we are loading the data into fact table and this fact table uh, session is a different i mean uh, again a separate session so s underscore m underscore work order daily fact whatever it is there so just you can try and use it and after this we are actually sending an email and all those things that you can say that so if they say that what is complex in it so the process of generating a parameter file is a complex for 21 sessions and uh, the process of uh, implementing the mapping with all these 50 validations was also a difficult thing uh, for validating so this is something uh, you can explain it as a complex scenario when somebody asks you to uh, define about it so majorly the fetching the incremental data based on the parameters was a challenge so we generated a dynamic parameter file and then did it so this way you can explain one um, this stage load thing will contain all the 21 sessions so for 21 sites you'll have a 21 sessions whatever it is there. so this is something that which you can explain as a complex mapping or a complex scenario that you actually have in Okay. Any questions you have? Uh, in my resume, uh, uh, Babu added uh, uh, that I, I know data, or what is it like uh, profiling, data profiling using the Informatica okay. profiler. I, 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 I don't know, is it like I removed it from my resume, I don't want it like. Uh, um, okay. So, is it okay or do we need to 